Welcome to the No BS Short-Term Rental Podcast, an unfiltered look into the global vacation and short-term rental industry. I'm Matteo Bradford. And I'm John Stokinger. And this is our podcast. We bring the right people to the table at the right time, giving you an inside view and take on the short-term rental industry like no other podcast can. Good morning, Matteo. That was like a robot. That was pretty crazy. I don't, I'm never doing that again. Uh, yeah, I would appreciate that. It was a little creepy. Thank yeah, I, I won't. I won't do that again. I'm. I'm at a loss. Um, I want to. Wh- what episode is this? Episode. I'm trying to figure this it out. Is 28. I'm, 28. Holy shit! Yeah. Awesome. Well, it's nice to see you. How's your That's weekend? Oh, you. Um, you know, it was, it was all right. I had a little bit of a cold. You know, not, yeah, but it was okay. It wasn't too well, bad. We're back at it. We got some amazing guests. I'm going to go ahead because, again, you like the introductions. So I'm going to go ahead and let you go ahead and do the introductions. But um, I'm really excited right. about today's today's episode. I am, too. I am, too. So, well, it's interesting. Now, I'm going to start making you do all the introductions, Sean, just because uh, I'm going to see how you do um, in that space. All right. I could do it, you know. But no, we'll, we'll start next week. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, this week, man, as usual, man, we have uh, an amazing lineup. We have two amazing guests. Uh, we have Dennis and Michael from Cassiola and Gestor, which I am super excited to be talking about. But um, uh, getting Dennis and Michael on here, um, uh, I've known Dennis uh, for a couple of years now. Uh, actually, we yeah. met him back in my rented days, uh, and, and through the conference circuit, and you know, have been a uh, a vendor of Cassiola, um, but also have been an admirer of of Cassiola, uh, and watching what De- Dennis and his and his amazing team have have built in our building, um, and so it was a no brainer to get him on here. Uh, you know, but been- but real quick, I two intro to like totally jump in and sabotage mm-hmm. this introduction here Please have do. you been to their office i have not been there. i i don't even think i've gotten an invite wait hold I, on. No, I, no. I have been in the office i've sat down at a table and it's and i've seen all the the cassiola vans parked outside it was it was impressive uh, but okay i'll, I'll let yeah. you get back to it <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. But no, but and uh, no, seriously, um, Michael, Dennis, we are, are ecstatic to have you on uh, the No BS Short Term Rental Podcast. So thank you for taking the time to come and talk to us. Um, and yeah, we let's dig in. Um, you know, what we really do and we always ask is, hey, you know, it, it's a how did you get here? How'd you get into this space? Where'd you come from? And, and how did you get to where you are today? And so those are our first questions. And uh, Michael or Dennis, either one of you can dig in and 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 kind of start with that uh, kind of we you know intro for yourself, but uh, bring us up to speed. How'd you get here? I tell you what, an introduction. I'm almost starting to blush, and before I forget, you're always welcome. Uh, so uh, um, coffee is ready at the office. Uh, Any around in Orlando? I'm gonna make some time. I'm definitely gonna get down there soon for sure. <laughs> So uh, to answer your question, where it all started for me is is far away. So I, I'm actually from uh, Belgium. Um, so I'm a far, uh, yeah, a long way from home. Um, in in Belgium and and in Europe, I had actually an online printing uh, company. So something completely different, um, e-commerce. Oh, wow. So we um, we sold business cards and posts flyers, brochures online, so we would print them and then ship them to your home or office, very similar to what Vista Print uh, does here in the, the US. So um, I have been doing that for um, almost uh, 12 years, um, since I was 18. Um, I started my company like the, the week after I uh, turned 18. Um, I've been doing that for a long time. And in 2013, I, I sold the company to, to a competitor. Um, and my plan was actually to, to slow down, um, come to Florida, Sunshine State. Uh, just so you know, the weather in Belgium is, is, is very bad. It, it rains a lot. We have like two weeks of, of summer a year, if we're lucky. Um, so I thought, okay, I'm going to go somewhere where the weather is a little bit nicer. I want to slow down. I'm too young to retire, so I want to keep myself busy. And I thought property management sounds like fun. Um, and I, I imagine 
sitting myself, seeing myself sitting at the pool all day with my laptop and a cocktail, just waiting until <laughs> someone. This is funny. For something. But... So, <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, big mistake. Uh, obviously, um, I've never worked so hard in my life as as um, since I'm in, in property management. Um, it was actually so bad that after six months, I, I told my wife like, hey, this is not what I want to keep on doing. So we either grow the business or or we sell it and, and do something else. Uh, but I did see a lot of opportunity um, in this industry. Um, that was in 2014, so seven years ago. Um, very uh, fractured market, uh, but I, I saw it as a um, growing market that would go, go through a lot of professionalization and, and evolution, and, and I really want to be part of that. So yeah. in, in seven years, almost eight years now, you've taken your idea of, of, of sitting by the pool with a drink, which we know is just an absolute joke, um, and how that easy property management, how easy property management is. And you've taken it from, I mean, let, let's talk like that first year you had what, you know, how many units did you think you end up, you know? So I, I started with purchasing a small existing business with uh, um, 25 homes all in, in one resort. They were all condos, actually, not even homes. So mm -hmm. it was supposed to be very easy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I started, and it was just me um, doing all the office and marketing and, and guest relations. And, and then my wife was the one in the properties every day checking up on, on housekeeping and making sure that, that all the supplies uh, were there for the guests. So you took it from 25 properties year one back in 2014 to your, and what's the approximate number where I know you probably know exactly what it is. How many units do you have today? It's around uh, 450. Mm -hmm. That's it. Just, just 450. So That's just a kind of a small company. Yeah. Um, laptop yeah. business, man. That's, that's laptop business. We do yeah, it from the company you got couch, this. right? <laughs> well, we're, we're, well, who do we have a million dollar host on last week? And, and she yeah. did it all straight through Airbnb. And I'm like, you're crazy. You're absolutely yeah. insane. 135 units, no, no PMS, no software, just, just Airbnb. I'm like, you're insane. Um, but absolutely insane. But so up to 450 units and you are like, when you think, when I think Orlando property manager, I think Cassiola, and you know, I know, I know we're going to kind of talk about this, uh, you know, a lot, but let's talk about brand and let's talk about, you know, like when, when I see you at a conference, I see any of your team, anywhere you are, you guys are pink. I mean, it's so smart. Can, right can I correct you, John? It's magenta. It's I think it's magenta. Very, very okay. good. Uh, remember I, I, that from uh, your office visit, right? <laughs> yes, I, I I apologize. It's definitely magenta, not pink. Come on, man. I knew that, and I haven't even been to the office yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You made some real. Yeah. You and your team have made some really conscious efforts early on with your logo, with the you know with your your branding, with the magenta color. Like, can you talk a little bit about that and and how that has like I'm, I go online and, you know, I'm on all the different social, you're everywhere, you know, and yeah. it's, it's amazing. And, and so many other property managers can take, like, if they were just observe you, they would up their game so much. Can you, let's dive into that a little bit. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, so I get that question a lot, like why magenta, why did you go for that color? And, and it's actually, um, it, it, that's my marketing background. So uh, before I started here, I, I did some marketing uh, or market research. And what I did is I, I took every single company and, and logo that, that I could find in Central Florida and I put them all together on one big uh, um, sheet. So it had all these low mm. different colors. And then um, I picked the exact opposite um, color that no one else uh, had. That. So that's how we ended up with uh, magenta. That was the forest away from all the blues and yellows and greens and 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 browns that that other people uh, had. So, and 
in in the beginning because when you when you start out as a small business you don't really think that much about branding or, or becoming a big brand but it, it really hit me at uh, one time I, I met someone and then she said oh I remember you I, I met you two years ago at an event um she did not know my name anymore she didn't mm-hmm. know the company name she didn't know Casiola but she did remember um the color and from that day on I, I sworn to never wear suits anymore at conferences or events uh, we always polos our, our pink uh, uniforms and and everybody in the company mm-hmm. and, and you just see us walking because it's such a different color and, and like you mentioned all the vans it's the same thing um uh, have around uh, 12 or 13 uh, vans but it's like they're all over orlando because the, the color stands out uh, so much uh, so yeah worked out great love it i absolutely yes. love it so in your mind, so you said something earlier I want to tap into, and you were talking about either you were going to scale or quit, right? Quit yeah. the business. And, you know, we were talking kind of before the show, and I was talking about, you know, my vision and knowing you for a while, you know, as a as a vendor and stuff and, and watching you grow and, and, you know, just looking at your business and seeing that you from, from as long as I've known you, it seems like you started out with this idea of building out a brand. Right. And, you know, there's so much talk in this in this space, so much talk in the short term rental space about wh- who's going to be the brand. What's the brand going to be? Is it going to be Picasso? Is it going to be, you know, whoever is it going to be V trips like who's building a brand? And it seems like you I don't want to say you've been under the radar, but I think you've you've been consistently building a brand solidly, like for as long as I, I've been around. Uh, and it seems to be becoming more successful. And it seems like, you know, I don't know, from the outside looking in, it seems like you you know how to do this perfectly. And I, I just want to get to your mindset, like at, at that point when you decided to grow this business and you decided to grow Cassiola, you know, was that in your mind? What was your strategy? Were you out to build a brand? Did it come naturally? Talk to me a bit about, you know, your headspace then. Yeah. So um, my whole career before this, just so you know, I did know, not know anything about property management when I, I got into the term industry, which really shows what my vision was of, of doing. Um, but the last uh, 12 years before that, the only thing we had been doing was, was online marketing, uh, was branding, because as an e-commerce business, that's that's thing uh, you have you have to sell yourself um through a website through social media mm-hmm. um, through, through adwords uh, we did not have any uh sales people on, on, on the road visiting customers everything was was done um online so that's that's basically all i i knew and and of course that's why you apply in your new business for me it, it wasn't so much um of, of having a vision like we're gonna build this and it's gonna be big it was just doing what I um, had been doing for the last uh, 12 years. So it, it happened very naturally. Uh, it, it's not that there's a big master plan uh, behind it. It's it's just, yeah, what I do. I think that I, I love that. And I, I think that, again, you know, so many people just can, there's so much can be taken out from that, you know, and you did it organically. You didn't really, you know, this is just what you had done and you, you wanted to build a brand and you wanted to build a logo and you wanted to be remembered. And it just kind of happened organically. Um, and where so many others struggle so hard to, to realize, you know, th- th- it's almost like they put the, you know, you didn't realize you're putting the cart and, you know, the horse first, but you actually did. And everyone else yeah. seems to be putting the cart in front of the horse. And, and, and now retrospectively, they're like, oh shit. Like we don't really have a brand here. We got we have a decent product, but how are we? How do we differentiate? And what happened organically for you and Cassiola, and and in turn these other you know your other brands, which we you know we're excited to be talking about here in just a minute. And we got Michael here just sitting here, like I want to say something. Um, <laughs> there there are four of us on this call, by the way. If anyone's yeah. listening, um, and we'll get to Michael here in a second. Um, but it's to me, it's 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 a lesson that that could be and for not a tips and t- tricks podcast. This is like what happened organically to you. Others have to to 
struggle and, and, and actually think about it and, and really put it in the forefront. Um, and I think if those that do that early on in the process are going to be more successful and yeah. the proofs in the pudding with, with what you've built here at Cassio, congrats. Yeah, that's all. The let's, let's talk about, about this, this new thing, which I saw at VRMA and I had, and I was like, what the hell is guest were? But I've, I've done my research. Um, well, I, you know, today, this morning, I'll be very transparent with you. I, I, I looked at it this morning. Um, the talk, let's talk about it. Let's, well, let, let's, let's have Michael introduce himself here. And then yeah, let's also, let's you. jump in and, and talk about this guest or brand and, and what this is. Cause I'm, I'm super intrigued. Yeah. Um, so hi everybody. This is Michael Lester. So I, uh, I actually joined the Cassiola team this summer. Uh, previously I, I had actually worked with Dennis as a consultant through a prior company. Uh, but I think, you know, part of, I think Dennis's strength is his ability to see things a little bit different than other people have uh, approached things in the past. I mean, not necessarily coming from that property management background and coming from the e-commerce background. Um, I think he's, he's approached things a different way. He's very innovative. And I think that's what's really, that, that's basically what really attracted me to Cassiola. And I think what's really shown them to be, uh, you know, industry leader, especially here in Florida. Um, but uh, let me go back to my, my background a, a little bit. So I, I basically took a traditional accounting, uh, what a lot of people do in accounting. I, I actually uh, grew up in a firm called PricewaterhouseCoopers, which is the, uh, it's the largest global accounting firm, uh, you know, in, in the world. So I spent 13 years with PwC. Um, I worked here in the U.S. and I also worked over in Europe. I was based in Ireland uh, for about uh, just over two years. So I was working in the U.K., working in France, working in Switzerland. Um, had a, had a great uh, you know kind of global accounting experience there, and then relocated back to to the U.S. Um, I ended up leaving PwC after about 13 years and joined an accounting firm that specializes in vacation rentals called Simplify. And that's actually how I how I had met John in in the uh, in the past when he was he was with a, a, a different company at that time as well. Um, when I was with Simplify, that's where I met Dennis. I was actually working as a consultant for Cassiola for I think about a year and a half or so. Um, yeah. Around uh, around the COVID time, I actually split with Simplify and uh, did something else for a little bit. And then uh, the opportunity came to rejoin Cassiola, and I was very excited to, uh, you know, join with Dennis, really help the company grow, and work on uh, Guest Store, as you had previously mentioned. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm super excited to to be a part of the team. Uh, it's been it's been a exciting few months uh, since I joined this summer, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm, uh, I'm excited to see how the next year or so and more is, is going to go with Guest Store and, and Cassiola. Well, I think we we knew it was going to work because you also look good in magenta. So if those that are watching on yeah. YouTube here, you know, like if you don't look good in magenta, you can't join the team. So just that's actually part of the interview process. I, you, can you take some uh, some pictures and you know show me magenta? And yeah, like a little you, some posing. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta get the, so hey, cult, cultural cultural fit is everything, man. Listen, I, I get it. Right? You know, everybody <laughs> looks good in magenta. It's a simple. Mm -hmm. thing. I. Try. It, it is, it does look good. Um, and, you know, Mateo just mentioned cultural fit and not to bring this to me, but, you know, I, I'm building out a team at Hopper right now. And that's the hardest thing right now. I'm, I'm feeling is, is trying to get these foundational hires with, with a couple of other key players that are on our team and finding that cultural fit that, that are willing to go ahead and push their sleeves up and get dirty and, and build something amazing. Man, that's hard as hell. I'm having a, I'm, like I'm, st I've never been like, like, like knee deep in the hiring process before. And I'm super excited to, you know, where I'm doing, but damn, this is hard. This is like, you're like, oh, I think they will be great in six months from now. Once we, you know, once we've built the core or foundational hires and that, you know, but that's difficult. I'm, I'm glad that, that you guys came together um, and, you know, you joined the it's team. The hardest part uh, as a CEO, but also the most important part building uh, your team and, it's a little bit like uh, what we discussed earlier with the branding. Um, the harder you try, um, the harder it is uh, probably because it's yeah. something that just has to click. A, something completely different than what you envisioned 
uh, um, in the beginning, uh, um, you have the, the weirdest people with completely different backgrounds that, that just make up a great team, uh, um, mm -hmm. which you would never imagine when you first met them. So it's it's hard, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, if it works out, uh, it's really, uh, really great. But it's it's interesting. And so I want to bring this up too, because there's two points I want to make around this and 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 kind of one to highlight, um, but the other is, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a deliberate effort to do it, right? Like even within building, what is the culture of of Cassiola gonna be? And you know, I'm in the verbs, right? Like I say that all the time. If you know me, I say that all the time. I'm in the verbs, I'm in the action. And you know, John, when we were putting together the DEI stuff, Cassiola stepped right up. Uh, Dennis was actually the only C the only CEO, the only leader of a of a company that attended our session. We had a lot of support, but he was in there. He was in there with our with his team, um, and they were present and giving feedback. And that that is to me the the essence of of how you build that culture is is through your leadership and through your leadership's actions. And so, number one, kudos uh, to you and Cassiola for that, and thank you for the support. Um, but also, you know, I think. As we as you grow and as you continue to you know build out your business with that deliberate strategy in mind, I also think you're 100 percent the beneficiary of that um, because it's going to provide a better guest experience. You're going to provide a better uh, experience for your employees and, and and those who are in your ecosystem. Um, and so again, please talk to that and 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 because I, I think a lot of people talk to it, but and maybe they don't know how to do it or or they're uncomfortable with how to do it. Uh, or whatever. I don't want to make excuses for anybody, but it's good to see you do that in action and love to hear how that became a part of your philosophy uh, for your culture yeah. at the company. So again, also from, from my experience, um, it's culture is, is everything. Uh, um, it determines uh, um, how your company is going to be, uh, um, how, how it's going to be moving forward. As a CEO, um, you you have some um, influence, but um, it, it's in, impossible to do it all uh, myself. I need people um, to to um, yeah do all daily uh, operations, daily stuff, and preferably people that are better better at it uh, um, than I am. And it's I'm, I'm going to be honest; it has been a, um, a big challenge uh, here to find people. Even before COVID, it, it was hard, and I think. Um, this has always put like uh, a break on, on our growth. If it, if it was easier to find uh, good people for me, we'd probably be even further than we are uh, right now, but it has been a uh, heart. And, and for me also, there's a big difference in, in culture. Uh, like being from Europe, um, if you join a company and, and um, you, you want to part ways, um, you have to give three months notice. So here, um, I've seen... What? Walking out. Okay, yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. if I want to fire someone, if I hire John and I'm not happy and I want to fire him, um, we, st we still have to work uh, three months together. If, if you want to quit, John, you only have to give me two months notice. So oh. it, uh. it, 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 yeah, it, it's a big difference. So in the beginning, I was like, oh, in, in the US, it's like an employer's dream um, can just fire anyone wherever you want and, and, and they're gone. Um, but now I also start to see the um, yeah the backside uh, um, of it. So people um, are not as, as uh, um, loyal to to jobs. Uh, they, they they hop from one to another if they can make a few bucks bucks more. Um, so you have to offer them some something more than than just money because there's always going to be someone that that wants to pay more. Um, it's as simple as that. You you yeah. You cannot compete with every single company uh, around here. We we are in Orlando. We have Disney. We have Universal. We have all the big hotel chains. They have benefits. They have free party yeah. tickets and, and 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 so on. So you need to come up with with other ways to to uh, um, yeah keep uh, uh, people and and culture there. I think is is uh, very uh, um, important. So we're we're a very open uh, company. Um, for example, I, I don't have an office. Um, I, I sit in, in the main office just like everybody else. Um, I want to hear what's going on. I want to hear people talking. They can talk to me. To me they can ask questions. 
Um, so that's that's a um, first step. Uh, everybody's at the same level. If, if a good idea is a good idea, it doesn't matter if it comes from a housekeeper or, or from me or, or from another manager. Uh, we just want to um, hear all the, the, those ideas and, and, uh, and be quick to, to change. So, um, yeah, there's a the, the whole bunch of other things. We, for example, have also a monthly event. It's called the, um, the CCC, the Casiola Cruz Celebration. So each month it's mm. organized by two um, different people from different departments. So they're just selected at random. Actually, this month it's, it's Michael, our CFO, that has to organize our Thanksgiving event uh, together with nice, one of nice. the portfolio managers. So I don't think they've... Met before in person, and now they have to uh, uh, organize an event uh, um, together. So it's those kind of things that, that really open up the culture um, and, and, yeah, that make you work with, with people that you usually don't work with and then get to know them and, and works out uh, great. The, that's amazing. Um, I, that. yeah. I, I, know, I know we're going to be talking here about guest tour, but I, I want to just kind of uh, pause on this and, and kind of and another thing that I've noticed in in the few years that I've known you, Dennis, and and been following the Cassiola and, and what you've been doing there, is you know on top of the brand and and that focus is you've always had a, a high focus on tech. Um, you you're, you you want to go ahead and and stay ahead of the game. You're you're uh, a lot of what you've done is proprietary. Um, you have a really amazing. Um, proprietary, uh, you know, homeowner uh, platform, for example, um, owner login, that kind of thing. Um, and, and I know you're, you've kind of doing some transitions and you're, you know, and you're staying focused and building out some amazing, amazing things on, on the tech side. Uh, additionally, what, what I noticed in, on the social side and what you're doing on, in the marketing is like your, your team is always, is always doing, staying like, up to date with Disney and and Orlando and um, I can't even think I don't live there, but all the, the major theme parks Universal. and you're going and doing your yeah. 75 anniversary and your, your your team is getting education so you can yeah. in turn allow your, you know, to relay that same information and be a better, give a better guest experience to your guests. And I, I absolutely love that about what, again, it's brand. It brings it all together. It's like it's that experience, but but you've been doing some amazing stuff, and so kudos to you and your team uh, for staying ahead oh, of that yeah. curve there. Yeah, Orlando may be in a typical market uh, for that. Most markets you have like the beach or 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 um, forest or or whatever landmark, and it doesn't change that much. It's the same every year, but here in Orlando, um, all those team. Are, are competing for everyone's business. There's new rides, there's new uh, team parks opening, water parks, attractions. Every every single month, there's something new uh, um, opening. And of course, this year's this year we have the 50th anniversary of, of Disney, uh, big celebrations, new shows. Um, but also, how to go to the parks has changed a lot. Now you need theme park reservations. Uh, um, you don't have fast passes anymore, but you have something new like Disney Genie. So um, um, it's it's not as easy anymore as it was in the past going to Disney. You don't just show up there um, and buy a ticket at the door and, and go in. Um, that's that's impossible a lot of these days. So we do need to educate our guests because that's in most cases why they visit Orlando. So we I, I remember um, last last uh, um, spring break actually we had people staying with us and and they called us up crying because um, they're go to Disney, but they didn't make theme park reservations. So they spent all that money um, to, to bring their whole family to Orlando. They booked flights. They had a home with us. Uh, and then it turned out that they couldn't go to Disney anymore because they didn't have a reservation and, and all the theme parks were completely full. So uh, um, to avoid this kind of experience, uh, we really need to, to educate our guests about how it works uh, um, these days. It's awesome. They, it's again. also fun. <laughs> Business yeah, and, really and then you get to go ahead and test out this stuff too, you know, like a new ride. Uh, right. Twist my arm. I guess I have to go check that out. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I can't wait to get down there. There's so much Star Wars stuff I need to go to, and my son is excited too. So I, I, I mean it. I will be down there sooner than later. So yeah, we're definitely hitting you up. I, so can we get into guest or like, I mean, I've been excited. I'm going to talk about this for a while. 100%. Let's do are, it. Are, are we ready for that? I think I, we are. I really want, 
right. you are yeah all right Dennis. <laughs> let, let, let's so, get, let's dig right into this man yeah, yeah guest yeah. tour guest tour happened um because of a couple of things um first of all dealing with with owners is i think the hardest part at least for for us um from yeah of the whole property management uh, business it's not dealing with guests but it's dealing uh, uh, with owners you have to explain everything over and over again you have to in our case convince or try to convince 450 people about the same thing uh, that you know 100 percent sure that it's going to work and and they all have their different opinions <laughs> about something um, and then on the other hand, what we were seeing is that a lot of our owners that did invest in vacation rentals were not doing it um, the right uh, way. Um, and we also do a lot of business development. So uh, uh, we try to, to attract more owners to join our what we did see there is that 90% of the people contacting us that found our brand online um, did not have a vacation home uh, yet. So they were interested in management, but they did not have a vacation home yet. And, and they were looking to see if we could assist them and, and point them in the right direction. Um, and now we have a whole CRM system. So we follow up on all those leads. And, and we saw even after a year, two years later, like, Again, 90% of all those people still did not buy a vacation home um, after, after two years being interested. So what we noticed is it, it's still a very uh, long and, and complicated process uh, uh, buying uh, real estate. And you have like two groups. You have on one side uh, people with a lot of money uh, that don't want to spend the time to, to look at homes and, and, and pick out furniture. They just want, want to invest and they want to see a return on their money. And then you have on the, the other side, people that want to buy a vacation home, but that may not have um, all the, the funds they need. So they, they think that they can buy a good home with $50,000 and that they're going to have like um, each year. But that's, of course, uh, not happening if you want to buy a home in a good location you have to spend uh, uh, much more than that. So we saw those two disconnects uh, um, there um, and we thought, hey, what if we could just um, buy those homes? We know the market, we know the business. Um, we can just uh, um, create some kind of a fund um, and instead of, of uh, people having to buy individual homes and, and, and making all those different decisions, we can make those decisions for them. We know exactly what works. We know uh, what amenities are that guests are looking for, what type of bedding, uh, what type of furniture that really works. You know, the areas uh, that have a great return. So let's just do it for them. And, and uh, people can just buy in and, and buy a uh, um, share in, in those homes. So we, we actually started with the project um, pre-COVID. Uh, was me and our marketing guy, uh, um, Cedric. And, and then, of course, COVID happened, so everything uh, got put back uh, on, on the back burner. And then we, we, we started it, and, and we kind of got stuck in all the legal mumbo-jumbo, and, and, and it's so hard and complicated, it's, um, and, and that's actually where, where Michael uh, um, came in. We really needed someone with, with experience that had been uh, uh, doing similar things uh, before. Um, because for us, or, or at least for me, that's a whole new world. I know property management by now, but I, I don't know anything about the, the financial uh, uh, part. And, and Michael has been great um, to, to help us uh, getting that uh, set up. Because you need uh, SEC approval, uh, Securities Exchange Commission. So it, it's hundreds and hundreds of, of pages with, with legal language. Um, so I'm, I'm really glad uh, uh, Michael uh, was able to help us and get this going. Going. it's amazing <clears throat> it's uh but dumb it down for someone that is like that 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 90 percent they come back that that are interested in 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 getting you know i want to buy a vacation rental home and i have fifty thousand yeah. dollars like what what exactly and you know you're like okay that's never happening um like for that person if you were to reconnect with them and say, hey, you know, this is what guest store is now. Like, what would that conversation be? 
Yeah. So Gestor is actually making um, vacation rental home investment accessible for everyone. Um, that's our mission. That's our goal. We want um, everyone to be able to invest in, in vacation homes from our housekeepers to our maintenance uh, uh, techs to, to, to me, to you, to, to everyone. Um, we really want it to become like an and um, class, um, just like you buy stocks on, on Robinhood. So that's how easy we want to make it. Um, you can also invest in, in vacation uh, rentals. So basically what we do is we do all the work. Uh, we want to um, build a portfolio of, of worldwide vacation rentals, some in Orlando, some in Miami, in Paris, um, you name it, every uh, uh, big tourist destination. We're going to source the homes. We're going to um, renovate them. We're going to look for um, the best-in-class local uh, property managers because the goal is not for, for Casiola to manage all of them. We, we know how hard it is to scale operations. So uh, we want to work with, with the best-in-class property managers. Um, and, and as an investor, just let's say you want to put in $100. Um, you own a little part of all the homes in that portfolio and you get a return on as well rental income as, as property appreciation on, on all those uh, homes. So it's really a way to, even for, for existing uh, homeowners, to, to diversify their investment and not putting all their money and eggs in, in, in one basket, uh, but to be able to have a worldwide portfolio of, of homes and if the market is up, for example, in, in Europe and down in, in the US, you still get um, a much more stable uh, return on, on the investment. And, and we're targeting uh, returns between uh, 17 and 25% uh, on, on a yearly basis. So uh, vacation rentals are really outperforming most other classes of real estate. Um, but yeah, you, up until today, you almost have to be a millionaire to, to invest in, in a vacation uh, rental. And then you only have one or maybe two, depending on the location, which is still very risky. So we want to and, and make it safe and, and, and uh, accessible for everyone. That's, I, it's a no-brainer. I mean, to me, if you have yeah, some money... The, the return is 70, you know, even looking at the, the short end of it, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty phenomenal return. Now, now what is, you know, the obvious risk, like anything is, you know, if they, if vacation rental just stop performing altogether, there's going to be, you know, there's no yield, you're not going to actually make anything. Um, but you know, you and I, and everyone's listening to this podcast, um, knows that at least in the, you know, in the from now and into the unforeseen future that that's not the case um no, and then there's other ways around it of course um you mm -hmm. can switch to long-term rentals in 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 worst case um that that's a great thing about uh, vacation rentals you, you're flexible um can do multiple things midterm rentals long-term rentals um and and of course the real estate market crashes completely um you're gonna feel that in your returns too but doesn't really matter what you invest in. It happens if 2008 happens, you, yeah, you're going to probably lose money or, or have a lower return than you uh, um, are anticipating. Right. And, well, the other thing, too, is, and I'm sure, you know, it, it, all the disclaimers come out, there's always risk in investment, right, w yep. regardless of what that investment is. But you're bringing something to the table that allows everyone to to participate in this now the little guys can and i say little guys loosely but people who are not in the or, or don't have the ability to even get into this ecosystem at any point right like can't even yeah. you know as you said how many people do you know that can really just drop the cash or are in a financial position to to take advantage of a a, a segment of of hospitality and travel that is continuing to boom and is going to continue to grow right we know that's going to happen and not saying it's going to be perfect or up and down it's of course that's with any investment but this is a a way to do it without having to have the capital and also being able to weather the storms and like you mm -hmm. said one of the things i love about this is it's so dynamic in so many different ways that it can be converted it's almost like you know when people know what convertible notes are and things of that nature you well, you can convert it to midterm or convert it to long term um and one of the things i love too you know and i want you to talk about it too because you you will be able to actually kind of pick projects too right like you could actually pick a can't i believe if i'm wrong please correct me yeah. if i'm wrong but i believe you can actually pick 
if there's something that fits your fancy in a market or, or you know, in a space, you can actually pick which you which kind of uh, investments you want to put your money into. And I think that is is phenomenal, too. Yeah, what we really want to do is, is also build a community around it. So the big difference between mm-hmm. the store and, for example, buying stocks on, on Robinhood is that you can really boost the performance of your investment. So let's say that you um, invest in a you have to travel a lot for work or, or for leisure. So um, you can stay in that home, you can book it. Um, so I do get the question a lot, like, do we have like three days or three weeks in, in the home? So we are not a timeshare concept. It's, it's a, a pure investment uh, vehicle. So um, you don't get uh, free stays. Uh, we do offer um, guest or perks for investors. So things like early late checkouts, maybe an extra night if, if the night is, is uh, um, unbooked. Um, but mm-hmm. you really send all your friends, your family, you can stay yourself in, in guest homes and, and the more um, yeah, those homes are booked, um, yeah, the higher your, your return on investment is going to be. So what we really want to create is a combination of like um, a Marriott Bonvoy travel club. You have those mm-hmm. people Funny, um, when we uh, um, joined uh, um, Homes and Villas by Marriott, in the beginning, we were getting calls from guests that just booked on our website, and, and they were asking us, like, hey, can we uh, um, still cancel um, our, our reservation? Because I saw the same home on, on Homes and Villas by Marriott. And we're like, yeah, sure, you can, but why would you want to book on, on Marriott? Because it's 20 30% more expensive than, than if you book uh, um, directly on the website. Oh, that's okay. I want to use my points, points. or I want to um, earn points. Um, I'm okay with the price difference. And, and that really um, yeah, opened my eyes uh, um, to how strong the, the brand is. And, and, and if we can accomplish that, that you not, can only invest in, in Gester worldwide, but that you can also travel with them and stay um, with your guest or homes wherever you travel. Um, I think that you almost have like an Airbnb where everybody owns the homes that they're staying in. Um, so that's that's our long-term uh, goal, uh, basically. That's, I, I, I love I the love trajectory. It. I love where you're going with it. Michael, where, you know, you're, you're a part of this and you, you know, the, you, my question for you is what has the adoption been? What has, how, you know, you've been out. Um, the first I saw you was Verma International. I'm not sure exactly when it was, was that the, you know, if you were before that, but how's the adoption been? Where, you know, where do you see the trajectory and in, in where this is going to take you in this next year and into the future? Um, yes. I mean, so far we're, uh, you know, that was the, that was the, the first launch was at Burma International last month. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we have uh, two funds, two, two investment vehicles that we're uh, kind of launching concurrently. And our, our second fund is, is, uh, is really launching this month and we're just starting to acquire our properties now. Um, you know, at the moment we're targeting about 10 to 20 properties a, a quarter um, and then depending on, you know, how, uh, how capital flows in that, that may be increasing, uh, that's, that's kind of our target for now, but you know, it's, it's exciting looking at, at some of the different markets that, that we're going into at the moment and different, um, you know, opportunities that, that, uh, that, that we see on the horizon. So, uh, so yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're hoping for big things. And, um, you know, one thing that I wanted to go back to also, uh, is just the, the benefits of the diversification. And I think Dennis hit on this pretty well. Um, but you know, let's say you have five hundred thousand dollars to invest, and you're looking to invest into a vacation home in the Orlando market. You know, that might get you, you know, perhaps one home. And you know, if you were to invest into that one home and the roof goes out or the AC goes out, you know, you might lose, you know, a, a large, you know, depending on how serious the issue is, you could lose, you know, months and months of revenue. But if you take, you know, even a smaller fraction of that, the 50000 and, and put that into a fund of diversified homes, and you have one or two homes that have some type of issues, you really get the benefits of that diversification spread out amongst all the homes. So that, that hit to your, you know, your financials is actually quite a bit less when, you, when you're able to diversify like that. Right. Um, and, and really, the, the other big benefit of this investment versus putting the money in the stock market you know, this investment is also backed by by real estate, which is is um, 
you know, something that really, really helps when it comes to uh, even that, that diversification piece compared to the stock market. The, uh, what is the average, you know, and, you know, you've mentioned a hundred dollars as someone that could come in, you know, that this is available to anybody, you know, you've been doing, this has been, you know, live for a, a month or so now, you know, where do you see like the average investment, like the average person wanting to come ahead and, and throw some money at, at, is it 10 grand? Is it 500,000? You know, where, where is, where, where do you, if you can't say that, where do you expect it to be? Um, you know, I think it's hard based on the size of the individual investors that are approaching you. Uh, I mean, we've had some hedge funds that have given us a call and, you know, on the spot with a 15 minute phone call, wanting to wire over, you know, a million dollars, you know, pre pretty quickly. Uh, but then you also have, and, and, you know, this is something that that we're really, you know, that we want as part of our fund is is just everyday investors too. We don't want um, you know, we don't want all hedge funds. I mean, that, that's nice to have some capital infusions like that, but we really wanted to make it attractive for every investor. Um, you know, all our housekeeping team, maintenance team, um, you know, everybody that wants to have exposure to uh, vacation rentals that didn't have that opportunity in the past. Um, you know, their, their investments, you know, are, are not going to be million dollar investments. It's right. going to be less than that. But, you know, we want to be, really be able to make that accessible for everybody. Um, you know, at the moment, our, our first two funds are available for accredited investors, ones that are launching now. Um, and those funds, depending on the fund, have either a $10,000 minimum or a $1,000 minimum. Uh, we are working on what's called a Reg A plus filing, which should be around the end of the first quarter. And that's where our minimum drops to $100 uh, minimum investment. And that's really available for everybody accredited and non accredited investors. Uh, this is super exciting. Um, do you, is there anyone else that is doing anything like this at all? I know that there's, um, I, and I don't think it's this, but I, I know that there's, there's some different pivots in the, in the space, um, where, where it's more to help buy more properties personally, but you know, more of like homeowner acquisition, but it's not necessarily in investing. Do, do you see this? Are, are you the first? And I think you are, um, and, and have you heard any rumblings of anyone else like trying to do the same thing? And this has been um, done many, many times, but mostly behind the closed doors. So um, just a couple of people, friends that are pooling money together to, to invest in real estate is not something that, that we right. need to, or that's not new at all. Um, in the big difference is um, that this is really an industry-driven um, um, things. We know that the business, um, I, I know I've heard of a couple of other hedge funds that are doing similar things on their own. They're, they're trying to build operations um, nationwide and, and they're build, buying up the homes. But I don't think they realize uh, yet how hard it is to, to run uh, a property management uh, business. So they're going to have to <laughs> find that out uh, the hard way, I'm, I'm afraid. Um, so there, there's a couple of other um, funds that are definitely working on, on, on similar um, things. But I think what really um, gives us the edge is that we know the industry, the business, um, that we have been doing it um, for, for, for many, many years, um, that we already have uh, the um, and, and we really want to build that community around it. So it's not just in investing. Um, we want to have that whole um, club around it with realtors, with managers, with guests, um, all together um, building and, and boosting those uh, performances, uh, basically. Do you, sorry, were you going to say something, Taya? No. No, you got it. The... What what do you see the you know your biggest challenge you know in this next year getting this off the ground like where where is what's what could and I'm not going to say this is going to set it sideways because I don't think it's going to go side you know but what what are what are your your things that you're going to have to uh, you know overcome this next year two years. Well, getting uh, the right properties um, is, is going to be uh, the challenge. We all know that the market is, is high uh, right now, so we have to be uh, um, careful and, and really look at markets and, and what their appreciation is going to be over the next uh, few years. Uh, but again, it's, it's just like 
investing on the stock market, it's really hard to, to market and, and buy at the low and, and sell at the high. So it's, it's what you want to do is uh, buy every quarter, every several homes so that we also um, uh, spread our investment uh, there. We may buy some homes at the top of the market, buy more homes at the bottom of the market. And, and again, it's going to average out. That's uh, um, the, the benefit of um, diversification. Because uh, um, if you only buy one home, and you buy it at the top of the market, maybe 10 years, uh, um, and you may still not see a return, but if that's count, uh, um, it should uh, give you a much more uh, stable income. Well, that's the beauty and, and of, of the model, too. The, right? the other... Sorry? No, I was saying that was the beauty of the model, too, right? Because it's that concept yeah. of dollar cost averaging, right? Like, uh, as long as you're buying consistently, some will be higher than, and lower. But, you know, the, the interest in the compounding over time will, you know, yeah. I, it's, as far as we can see, will leave even the positive. So that's Absolutely, yeah. of that concept. Um, the other challenge, of course, regulations, um, which is something we all deal with um, if we buy homes and, and regulations will change, um, those homes may lose um, some, some value. Uh, but again, that's, that's why it's important to really um, spread our portfolio um, and, and not buy everything in, in one destination, one location. Um, but we have uh, um, yeah, some homes uh, everywhere, all around the country in the world. Well, in, on our website, we're going to we're for sure going to link, um, you know, with this with this episode, you know, both uh, Gestor and Cassiola. Is that the best way? If someone wants to go ahead and they're interested in in, in reaching out to you, is is to go to your website and, and kind of follow the instructions and join the waiting. I see I'm looking at it right now. It says how it works for property managers to join the waiting list. If someone's interested in investing with you, would it best to kind of do some research on the website and then join that waiting list? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, so everything is going to be done uh, online. So you're going to be able uh, to, to sign up. Um, as Michael explained, we need to do some checks now uh, to see if you're an accredited investor, um, and, and then you can actually the money and, and get going. Uh, um, so yeah, everything uh, can be done through the website. Now, for example, someone like me that is not a credit investor, but say I had ten grand, I wanted to go ahead and invest in it. Um, is that something I can do, or after some time, after you go ahead and do that? Yeah. So once we have the Reg A plus um, certification, you can do that. So that that would be uh, um, first quarter next year. Okay, Q one. You guys all heard Q1. it here. Q1. Yeah. A lot of non credit investors that have some money they want to go ahead and throw at this. So I, I'm excited for you all. Yeah. <laughs> So um, we're going to go ahead and leave the links on our website. You know, do you, yeah. what's uh, other than this? And I know this is a huge thing. What, what's next? You know, you, Cassiola and the Magenta, your brand, it's growing. It's, you know, what, what's next for you all? So we, we are expanding into uh, different destinations. So at the beginning of, of uh, um, this year, we expanded into Aruba. Um, next, mm -hmm. we are adding uh, Miami um, to our list, and, and the goal is to, to add more destinations. Um, as you mentioned, we have a very strong brand. We have a lot of technology, and, and we want to license uh, that brand to other um, local uh, property managers. Uh, um, so we are really good at the marketing and technology part. Um, so if we can uh, uh, partner up with uh, good local operators, I think we, we have a golden combination and, and we will be able to, to really uh, um, grow uh, um, yeah, Casiola brand. So kind of as a, as a franchise model is kind of what you're looking with the right, with yeah. the right, right managers? Exactly, uh, very similar, uh, yeah. And, you know, we've had past conversations uh, forecasting the future, um, and we have good friends in the, in the space here that are finding the most success with that, that franchise model and, and what that looks like. And again, that, that aligns right with that brand, you know, um, you know, you can, I'm excited to see your growth. I'm super excited for you. Yeah, we too. Too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, awesome. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Like this has been a great conversation. I'm super geeked up about Gastor. Um, and, and uh, you know, I, I may or may not have some money I want to go ahead and throw your way. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, and 
yeah, I mean, anything else you'd like to leave uh, the audience with today? Well, any golden quote for the day? Uh, it doesn't have to be a golden quote. <laughs> I didn't, wasn't sure if you had anything that, you know, that wasn't able to be said, either you or Michael, that you'd like to go ahead and, and share with the audience. In, I, I think something that really puts us on the map is don't do the same thing as everybody else is, is doing. Um, they're to be different um, as well in branding, as in technology, as in the choices that you make. Um, that, that's really what's important. So don't follow the herd. Be a little bit different and, and you're going to have uh, great success. Awesome. And, and let it come organically, man. Like that seems, if I took anything away from today, man, it, it's... The harder you it's, try, it's the, less likely the worse you do. Happen. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It's like so, dating. No, if you. you're really looking for the love of your life, you're going to find it. It's never showing it's up. It's going to happen when you least <laughs> expect it. So, yeah. <laughs> That's I awesome. love that analogy. That's awesome. <laughs> but Dennis, Michael, man, thank you guys so much for coming on. And, you know, we will definitely have you back on the show. We want to continue, you know, clearly John and I are going to be watching Guest Store uh, and, and Cassiola moving forward. So, um, you know, you're definitely friends of the show. We're happy to have you back on. Um, and, you know, I'm definitely coming down there, Dennis. I'm, I'll call you and let you know. I, I want to see this office now. I mean, Will's been there. John's been there. I, now I haven't been there. And I'm like, You're the oh, only that's one. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's just sad. I'm, I'm, I have to talk to Seth about that, too, man, because that's yeah. Uh, yeah, talk about it. But, and I want to put a little disclaimer out there, too, real quick is, you know, Will, if you're listening, like, truly, we're not we're not watching your podcast go. Oh, he had Dennis on. We should have Dennis on. We had Michael on. We should have Michael. <laughs> I, I talk. No, the only reason I, I got I got call from Will. He's like, and then I got pictures of these guys together. I know, so it was I saw like, them. And they're, they're going. They're sending them. Yeah. And yeah. I'm getting these text messages and I was like, oh, they're together. And I was like, I didn't get an invite. You know, my phone was in, <laughs> intact, but no, it's all good. I love you. No, so, you we, know. Uh, so it came to our uh, C or Halloween event. Uh, um, he probably did not expect that, but uh, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> No, we, we're, we're good friends with Will and he, and we, we go back and forth. Actually, we're talking with him later today. So he's a uh, love, love Will, love what he's doing over there. And, uh, and I just like giving him shit. <laughs> well, thank you so much, gentlemen. Again, it's been, it's been a great, uh, great conversation. And, and anytime you want to come back and, and give us an update, you know, please, we're, we'd love to have you back on the show. We'd love to have you back for sure. Thanks for having us.